scream, I'm on a battleground With bullets whizzing by my head, the bombs are all around I'm trying to fight the enemy, but they're invisible No place to run and hide, extremely inhospitable A barren land, this treacherous and perilous Malicious villains all around me that are merciless It's a hazardous environment that's sinister I feel like Jonah in the whale, well, like I'm a prisoner It's just like him, my weapons are not physical My arsenal consists of powers that are spiritual I got a sling and stone to face all of my giants Even if I'm all alone trapped in a den of lions I can count on God to get me out of anything I can trust his word over absolutely everything No matter what the battle is, he is more powerful Welcome back to Archangel Ministries I got a surprise episode for you guys tonight And I was very fortunate to have one of my favorite Christian rappers to actually come on and do an interview with us. So I got to introduce Destiny Lab and uh, man, introduce yourself to everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah, my name is Ark from Destiny Lab is kind of my stage name I go, I go by. Uh, originally it's Archaeologic, but people kind of started just calling me Ark. <laughs> But archaeologist kind of a stem off or a spin off of the word archaeology or archaeological digs or whatever, which is one of my favorite subjects or musicals, all about digging for the truth, uh, exposing the deceptions of the enemy and proclaiming the truth uh, in Jesus Christ. And so uh, tell us a little bit about your testimony, man. How how'd you get uh, involved in all of this, man? Uh, well, I was raised in a, a Christian home. And uh, it was kind of, I was always kind of a unique kid into weird, the paranormal into off the wall kind of stuff like aliens and, and, you know, Bigfoot and, and all the mysteries of the world, you know, type of thing. And, uh, and because I was so fascinated and all that, I uh, uh, eventually got into doing special effects makeup and uh, so I was making full head masks and prosthetics and all that at the age of around 15 or so. I taught myself how to do all that. And I grew up in a really small town in Oregon. And uh, like I said, I came from a Christian home, but was into all this weird stuff, you know, especially aliens was my kind of uh, forte because I was creating aliens, you know. So, um, and I, uh, uh at the age of 18, moved to LA to become a special effects makeup artist and work in the industry and do all that. So I went down there and, uh, and got started working in the industry. And the first uh, movie I got hired for was a movie called The, Tr the uh, Lawnmower Man. And I don't know if you've ever seen The Lawnmower Man. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's all about transhumanism or using basically at that time, it was like a virtual reality type headset that they put on a guy that was a, a retarded guy that would make him uh, basically made him into like a godlike being there. He thought he was a God and basically taking over the world. And this was right as uh, things like the internet were becoming, you know, uh, a thing, you know, so this is pretty interesting. I didn't, I, and I, you know, I got into seeing all this kind of stuff. And so it really interested me into the whole transhuman thing. And then I was really big into aliens and I got caught up with some, some interesting people doing alien uh, or, or uh, sculpting aliens, investigating, you know, aliens. And I wanted to actually, uh, I got so involved that I was thinking, well, maybe aliens are the good guys, you know, maybe they're angels in disguise. Cause I started to hear, I thought about the uh, Ezekiel's wheel and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, well, maybe they're the good guys. And uh, they're, cause I just so wanted it to be something that wasn't a, I guess, a sin from my point of view to study or be into, and I was really into it. Uh, but it eventually sucked me in deeper where I literally wanted to be abducted and all this crazy weird stuff, you know? And I wanted to have these uh, sort of otherworldly experiences. I got into taking, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, different, different uh, drugs and different things like that just to experience or try to try these types of things. I got into following the Grateful Dead and just all these kind of weird off the wall kind of things. But I was still in my mind, always a believer. 
I was searching in ways that other people, you know, weren't getting into, but it did lead me astray quite a bit. Uh, eventually, I started investigating the te all the testimonies because I wanted firsthand experiences of these alien experiences. And I began to see that this was a completely uh, satanic type thing from the channeling experiences these people were telling and the testimonies these people were telling. They're always kind of telling the same types of ideas of the idea that mankind needed to evolve and we need to, oops, I'm getting out of camera range here. Uh, we needed to uh, ascend basically and become like gods ourselves. And from my Christian background, I knew, you know, yeah, that's the that's the lie of the serpent in the garden. You know, if you eat of this fruit, ye shall be as gods. And, and then I got deep into studying, you know, how that connects to the lie of evolution and the idea, well, that's where kind of evolution started is way back then. And it's always been the connection of every occult mystery school. I got connected and started studying like the connections of Freemasonry and the occult and the mystery schools, all these different things and started doing it from a Christian perspective. And, uh, and it started just opening my eyes that, wow, this is a grand delusion. This is a grand deception. This is connect connected to the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and, uh, and the idea of basically changing mankind or evolving mankind into something, uh, into a godlike being, which is basically what Nimrod was trying to do with the uh, Tower of Babel. It's what the fallen angels were doing before the flood. You know, it's the idea of, of like I said, all the, the Egyptian mystery schools, all these things, they want to live forever in some way. And so I saw all these connections. And at the same time, uh, while I was doing all this, I was really into hip hop. Back since I was a little kid, I was, uh, I grew up in, in the uh, break dancing when that was just first becoming a thing. And, uh, and me and my friends created rap and listened to rap and we just did it for fun. I never necessarily wanted to be a, a rap artist, but uh, it's something I knew how to do and we did for fun. And uh, I met a friend when I moved from California, I moved up to Portland, Oregon, and I met a friend up there uh, in the mid nineties and we started making music together just for fun. And that's the guy that I make music together with today, Genetics. And we made music for fun for just several years. And then we stopped making music and I got into studying all these things deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and then in the late nineties, uh, we got back together and started making a little bit more music. And officially in 2004, uh, I came up with the name Destiny Lab and I said, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this. I went to a presentation, I don't know if you know if, who Kent Hovind is. Oh yeah. You know, so I went to a presentation of Kent Hovind and saw him do a presentation of creationism and and basically explaining you know all those types of things and saying yeah, what can you do with your talents to expose the lie of evolution and and um, in a unique way and it was just something that kind of just wow maybe i should make music about this you know because i've studied all these things i know all the connections and i can't find anybody else that's making these kind of this kind of music so that's what kind of led me on the path uh to start uh making music and uh, under officially under destiny lab so, well, so sorry for the long story there. <laughs> no reason to apologize, man. It's a good story, and it's good to have that background because uh, that's one of the things that I've, you know, always enjoyed about uh, the music and stuff that you put out there is you talk about things that most people are scared to even touch on. Uh, I said your last album, you touched on Bohemian Grove and, uh, you know, the Nephilim and the Fallen yeah. Ones and everything else, and these are subjects that unfortunately always get swept under the rug by most churches. And yeah. uh, that's actually one of my biggest pet peeves with the Church of America is the lack of knowledge and the refusal yeah. to even look at these things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I was raised in a church. Uh, it was just a little tiny Baptist church, but the guy was constantly talking about, one of our earlier pastors was talk, always taught about the angelic conflict and about, you know, that these, you know, the fallen angels are the, the demonic beings and we would have outreaches exposing the occult that were, uh, we would have actually on Halloween time, we would have outreaches and bring people in and people dress up. And that's, I think, what kind of got me into, you know, the whole making and creating special effects makeup is because I felt like, wow, here, most people would assume that, you know, 
Christians would never partake in something like that. But to me, I look at God as the greatest creature creator that's out there. You look at the things that God has created and, and they're, a lot of them are very scary, horrific looking deep sea creatures and, and bugs and dinosaurs and all these things. So for whatever reason, God has a taste for these magnificent creatures. And I don't necessarily see them as evil. I think we give Satan too much glory if we give him command over anything that happens to look a little bit scary. And uh, I've used it as a platform to witness to lots of people uh, where I go to conventions and show the, my sculpture work, the things that I created. And, uh, and, and I would always bring that up. You know, my inspiration is God, the creator, you know, the world around us. There's obviously a designer because we see a design that all of us as sculptors use to create other things. Otherwise we'd never have an idea to make anything, you know? So it led to some really interesting conversations because there's not many people at these monster conventions that are, uh, that are witnessing to people. So it was fun. I can believe that. I've been to a few comic cons. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, th that's actually one of my favorite subjects to discuss with people is, uh, the theory of evolution versus creationism and uh, even the theory of intelligent design. It's only because yeah. there's so much stuff that disproves Darwinism. I mean, just yeah. the math alone kills it. And, uh, and I did a debate online a couple months ago with one of them and I told him, I said, I can name one creature in existence right now that's alive that disproves your entire theory of evolution. I said, what's that? I said, the platypus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Well, I mean, I always talk about the missing link between apes and man. What about the missing link between everything? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because their belief teaches that everything came from one single cell. So it's not just the missing link between man and monkey you need to find. It's the missing link between man and mushrooms, man and, uh, you know, centipedes. I mean, it, I mean, every single life form that's out there supposedly should be a fossil uh, link uh, somewhere out there. We we simply don't find it. It's it's a exactly it's a fairy tale fairy tale for grownups. Oh yeah, man. Exactly. I mean, okay. You tell me, how did that rock make a banana? <laughs> yeah. How'd that work? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. It, I mean, something does not come from nothing. You know, none of our science. You know, we throw our our take our brains out and they throw it out you know, just to the idea that something came from nothing, you know, that all these things arose just from nothing. I mean, how do they, they just don't even want to talk about that. Oh, that has nothing to do with the theory of evolution. That's something else. They don't want to discuss that matter. And that's been uh, the status quo in America for over a century now. I mean, you know, uh, you can't have real science. I mean, I know some microbiologists, and they tell me the deeper they go, they feel the closer they get to God because there's no way that any of this stuff can happen by accident. Yeah. But uh, the yeah. school system has completely removed God from it uh, on every single level. And even the history that we're taught is controlled and written by the tyrants that deposed civilians. You know, yeah. so it's one of those things. If you can control what someone believes about their past, then you can easily manipulate their future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of interesting how all these, there's a lot of scientists out there that now are admitting that, yes, it is possible that something created us, but it just wasn't God. It was aliens, you know, it's panspermia. Yeah, directed some, panspermia. Something else, you know, and uh, it's just, it's just amazing to see how they twist and turn their logic and confirm their own bias uh, about all these things, you know. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, over the next few years, how this deception unfolds. Uh, well, given the stuff that they put in that last uh, spending bill about alien disclosure and all that, it would be very interesting to see what happens over the next year or so. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, every few months they're saying, oh, we found another planet with, you know, that's possible that has life on it. You know, they're always dropping these hints that it's trying to kind of like, uh, prepare people in a way for some sort of, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, alien uh, exposure of, 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 of all these things, you know, basically, what do they call it? The, uh, 
what's the word they always use the uh the unveiling or something like that I oh can't remember. yeah <laughs> well it, it's that's always been one of my points that i found most interesting you know uh they have all this stuff you know you have an entire society dedicated to ufos and abductions and everything else but the biggest thing that i've seen them try and sweep under the rug are the numerous testimonies of people that when they experience the abduction phenomenon when they called out to jesus it stopped yep yep if it's yep. an alien from another planet how does it know jesus or even know who he is and why are they afraid of him exactly that's you know that's one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle here that connects all the dots. It's not just the idea of just studying the fallen angels, the Nephilim, that's part of it, that lays it, some of the foundation. But when you wrap your head around the experiences that people are having nowadays, the firsthand accounts, you know, of people like that Joe Jordan from the C4 Research Group has uh, put together and Gary Bates has collected. There's a lot of real uh, researchers out there who have now come to the conclusion this is absolutely interdimensional and it's the absolute same entities who have always appeared throughout time. The old incubus, succubus beings of old, the elves and fairies of, uh, of certain folklore. Um, you know, all these things tie into the same entities wearing different disguises because they all always tell the same type of lies. Why would an alien travel millions of light years and the first thing they want to tell you is, oh, Jesus is misunderstood. He's actually just an avatar like Buddha and, uh, you know, Krishna and all the rest. He's just an ascended master. Don't believe he's the son of God, whatever you do. You know, that's like their first thing. Most, one of their most important lies they try to spread, you know, like that's going to be the thing, not curing cancer or, or uh, bringing peace to earth, but let's just make sure that people don't believe Jesus is the son of God first and foremost. And let's also embrace evolution. Let's embrace the idea that we are all gods, which is the original sin. Oh, and by the way, uh, we'll inhabit you and torment you at night uh, with sleep paralysis. Oh, but then when you confront us in the name and authority of Jesus Christ, we leave. It's like, yeah. look at all these pieces of the puzzle and you tell me if this is not demonic. I mean, it's very clear when you actually investigate these things, there's no doubt about it. Well, and the thing about it is, if you go back into ancient cultures, you know, uh, there's an event in almost every single one that mirrors the Bible, and that is, you know, the fallen ones coming to earth and actually yes. habitating with men and women. And, uh, I mean, the, for the Druids, it was the converging of the spheres. Uh, <laughs> then you've got the Native American tribes, and some of their creation stories mirror you know, the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it for tat. And, uh, yeah. you know, even in my upbringing, you know, uh, I'm not sure if you got to watch much of my stuff, but I'm satanic ritual abuse survivor. So I was brought up in that world. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the theosophy that we're taught, we're taught that that happened, that yeah. the aliens created the genetic, you know, dispersity in the races. So elves, goblins, trolls, mm -hmm. uh, wraiths all these entities have common ancestors and related dna and if you go to the book of enoch it clearly talks about it in there and how these races came to be yes yes exactly you know all the connections are so clear but there's just one of these things that is a foundation that makes it all make sense and yeah. actually ties it into the modern day experience and what we actually observe and, and see and so you're not seeing people freed in the name of Krishna or Buddha or, you know, or any other uh, Ra or any other being. It's, it's in the name of Jesus that these things flee. And why is that? And why are these things trying to say that, you know, basically persuade people that Jesus is not the son of God and not to worship him and not to follow him and not seek a savior, that the savior is within, just like, you know, theosophy teaches and, you know, Blavatsky, I mean, that's basically what she was doing, was gathering the, all of the ancient occult, uh, you know, belief systems from Tibet to Egyptian to Freemasonry, and she was gathering all these mystery school teachings and putting them under one umbrella belief system, you yeah. know, and that is what the new age of every bit of the new age is based out of theosophy, basically, in one way or another, and 
uh, you know, uh, you see how, uh, of course, um, uh, why can't I think of the name right now? Uh, when people do the stretching and yoga. Uh, Yoga. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word, but you know, you see how yoga, of course, has become so mainstream. And you know, the world, root meaning of yoga is to yoke oneself with. You know, you're yoking yourself with the spirits, and uh, it's 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 really incredible um, how this stuff has become more overt and externalized, and and people are just becoming more and more blinded as it has become more clear to see. Well, exactly. And you, you have a lot of that going on. It's just like, uh, you know, uh, me, I have to train constantly. So I have to study, you know, self-defense, different styles of martial arts and things like that, because what my profession is. Uh, however, when I do it, I have to approach it from a scientific basis of physics and, you know, anatomy and things of that nature. And I have to completely do away with anything that ha relates to any of the spiritual practices of any of the martial arts whatsoever. That's the reason why I won't even go to a dojo because I know the history of that and what a dojo actually is. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. people don't think about these things. They don't consider that. Most Christians yeah. don't consider that because I know some great ninjutsu instructors, for example, in here, but for you to train in their dojo, you have to bow down to Buddha. Yeah, you can't yeah. be a Christian and do that. That don't fly right. Yeah. Just like you ain't got no business practicing Yoda, uh, Yoda, yoga. Uh, <laughs> or any of these other new age occult arts, one of the biggest flaws in modern Christianity is they is the lack of knowledge because they don't see where these things are connected. Yeah. You know, uh, they don't yeah. understand that every single new age belief, I don't care if it's Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, I don't care if it's the flying spaghetti monster, uh, Scientology, all of these networks are connected. Uh, it's just like back in the day with uh, Jim Jones. You know, uh, when he started getting crazy and going out of line, the other New Age societies and networks, the Council of Theosophy and even the Thule Society said, you know what, we're done. And they cut him loose because yeah. it's causing too much of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. People try to associate him to being a Christian, and he was not a Christian at all. He was completely associated to these New Age beliefs. He taught that they, we are God and many gods and all those same belief systems. So it was far from a Christian. He was a, a new ager and a cultist. So, and it's, it's the same with, you know, the heaven's gate cult. It's the same with the Charles Manson belief system. You know, uh, even the, you know, the people with involved with uh, the, the grateful dead, which I used to, you know, was kind of involved in and following, going to all these grateful dead shows and the uh, rainbow gatherings and all these things it's all rooted in the same thing. And it's just so sad because most of the people are just uh, well-intentioned and just along for the ride. They want something to be a part of, but they've been convinced through the lie. They've been convinced through the deceptions that are out there that it cannot be God. It cannot be the Bible. And in order to be, a, you know, all that, you have to go to, you know, be this big goody two-shoe you know, perfect person type of thing that they aren't. And so they just discard it from their minds. And it's just, it's sad to see. And that's, that's one thing about what we're going through in this world right now with all these things being externalized and, and being so clearly seen uh, God separating the good from the evil and us being able to see yeah. it's, it's time to pick a side, man. And, and God has been more and more patient every day that goes on to allow people to see what's going on and, and it's time to pick who you serve because time is short, people. Yeah, time is very short. I mean, especially here in America. You know, uh, about 10 years ago, God gave me a uh, open vision at 4.44 a.m. while I was praising and worshiping. And he showed me what was going to happen to America. You know, wow. uh, he didn't say when. You know, he, he never tells me when. Uh, but that seems to be the standard in his prophetic stuff. He says these things yeah. are going to happen. You'll see them when they happen. I'm not going to tell you when. Uh, yeah. But uh, I saw civil war. I saw an actual pandemic, not this nonsense that's going on right now, something that was very real and very, very, very deadly. And uh, mass civil unrest and all kinds of stuff. And uh, tyranny, government tyranny and overreach throughout the entire nation. 
and all this stuff it was collapsing in on itself before america wound up being invaded from the outside and uh That's what we're setting ourselves up for i mean this dis- yeah. this division amongst ourselves is setting ourselves up for a perfect time for some sort of invasion for some sort of you know ushering in this one world uh, agenda that they all want so uh it's yeah it's and cool. uh i gotta tell you man uh your new stuff you know i love uh battleground and uh you know remnant and some of the songs and stuff you on there on there and i really appreciate you having the courage to stand up and say hey i'm not gonna let you just be tyrannical and crush my liberties and stuff because that's one of the things the church really needs to hear as a matter of fact the episode of that i just released last night was uh confronting the false teaching of christian pacifism Hmm. uh and it's one of those things that it really bothers me to hear you know people that claim to be men of god saying that if someone invades their house they're just not gonna do anything (laughs) and just let them do what they want i'm like how can you call yourself a man of god he never gave you that right uh so i really appreciate you standing up Absolutely. There is a time to fight for what's just and stand up for what's right. And, uh, and it's, you know, people misunderstand the whole turn the other cheek thing yeah. and to, and, and, re, and misinterpret. Look at the whole of the Bible, look at the whole of scripture and don't just quote mine and try to pick and choose to yeah. re- reinterpret your reality. I mean, <clears throat> Jesus was overturning the, the money changers tables within the ta- temple there. You know, so he chased him saw, with <laughs> So this was just anger, righteous anger, and there's a time for that. And uh, we're okay. approaching the time is very. We're we're seeing some things unfold that, uh, unfortunately, it, it, you know, we may have to, uh, you know, defend ourselves, defend our rights, defend our families, and I'm I'm not afraid to do so. Well, that was one of the things that I tried to, you know talk about last night and I was real glad that the Lord interjected and led me with the scriptures and everything else because he made sure that I touched on Ecclesiastes there's a time for everything you know Mm -hmm. time for peace and a time for war and things of that nature and you know it's just it always it's a blessing to me when other men of God are not afraid to come out and say hey you guys are interpreting this wrong this is what God says you need to stand up and be men. I'm really appreciative of that. That's a really big thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially in today's day, day and age, in the fight against uh, masculinity, you know, this, this, there's, you know, that's what we're seeing is this uh, fluidity with the gen- genders is not about uh, men becoming women, women becoming men. It's about turning humans into non-humans, really. This is about preparing people for, the transhuman delusion, the mark of the beast, the changing of your DNA, all these other things that are associated to that. So, uh, and we see, if you look at different cultures throughout time and the fall of all these cultures, when it gets to the point where the fall of the culture happens, they forget about God. They, they completely give in to uh, evil and, uh, and sexual perversion. And, and there's also, there's this, uh, gender confusion and this has happened like over thousands of years in other cultures it's really strange yeah. but the, the genders suddenly get confused as to what the role of the man is the role of the woman is and and uh and that's kind of what we're experiencing so god may not tell us the exact time but we can recognize the season and that's yeah. what we're kind of recognizing is the this the signs of the season well history uh doesn't repeat itself but it certainly rhymes and, uh, you know, if you just said some of the great cultures, you saw it happening in Greece before, you know, the ancient Greeks fell. You saw it happen to the Romans. Uh, yeah. It even happened to the samurai in the ancient Japan. Yeah. Uh, and people really never dig into history enough to actually see these things. So, man, it's real honor to have someone that's uh, versed in this stuff that I can have these conversations with. Usually yeah. the only person I can talk about this stuff with is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's great that you awesome. can even talk to your wife about it, because a lot of couples can't can't talk about this stuff. My wife has finally uh, come around herself, but yeah, we we struggled for years of battling through these things. But she is now definitely on board and sees these things as loud and clear as I do. 
Yeah, most definitely, man. Uh, I said, it's really an honor to have you on, man. Uh, to be honest, I would love to have you come back on sometime if you're up for it. Uh, yeah. I'm actually getting ready to do an episode that is going to deal with paranormal entities, you know, uh, okay. yeah. elves and things like that, uh, werewolves, vampires, things of that nature, uh, because I have had a lot of people on uh, my channel asking here lately what to expect to see from the supernatural side of things as we progress further and further down this road. Mm. Uh, and it's just like my background, I know for a fact because that's what I was used for as far as you know because my generational spirit that was attached to my bloodline was a spirit of vampirism uh mm. so i know what that looks like and entails inside the covens inside their network and it's mm. the same thing with uh, lycanthropy with werewolves and stuff like that uh it's a specific type of demon that causes these changes and mutations but mm. i do also believe not only are you going to see that on a more rampant thing, but I think we're also looking at the Black Awakening happening on yeah. a decently, I'm not going to say soon, soon, but it's going to happen, I do believe. And uh, like Russ Dizdar talks about, is that what you're talking about? Russ yeah. Dizdar? And, yeah. 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 He's, he's has some very interesting ideas and he's a very knowledgeable guy. Oh, most definitely. Well, I was multiple myself. Uh, I'm still healing from that stuff. So I know yeah. it's very real, the things that are used for and the way they can trigger you and things like that. So yeah. I, the only thing I'm uncertain of is the actual timing. Yeah. I know what the Lord yeah. has shown me, but I don't know when exactly this is going to happen, you know? But yeah. Uh, yeah. I do believe that we're going to see very supernatural type beings and stuff. I think the giants are going to come to life and actually show back up again. And uh, so there's a lot of people want me to address these things. And I would love to have you come back on and actually do an episode on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love to. Yeah, I've got a song called Paranormal Species that kind of talks about how, you know, Bigfoot, Mothman, all these different ideas seem to, if you study the experiences of the people that experience these things, nine times out of, nine times out of 10, there's some sort of a cult overtone, even Bigfoot. There's yeah. people that are into all these occult kinds of things. It's kind of creepy because if you have the, the spirit to discern these things, and you study these things, you recognize when listening to the uh, testimonies of people or just hearing what they're into on the side, they just happen to be into all the same kind of new age ideas or whatever. It's, it's very fascinating how these familiar spirits work. I mean, that's really what these are. These, the familiar spirits are familiar to you, your history, your ancestry, your lineage, and they can, uh, you know, they can deceive you in a way that is convincing to just you, you know, okay. and uh, I think that's how it, how it kind of works, and I think throughout time, they've changed their costumes, they've changed their disguises, and we're seeing this slowly merging toward a transhuman uh, sort of a technological disguise, but to me, it's not necessarily going to be, we're going to think we're working with some sort of, you know, fine-tuned human-made quantum computer, but it's just basically going to be a, a black box, which is a fancy Ouija board, you know, yeah. and uh, and you, we're going to be tapping into these dimensions, interacting with these entities, maybe on some other trans-dimensional level, but it's going to be not necessarily inter any different than the channelers of old or or the kids playing with a Ouija board. And well, exactly. Cool. I mean, you, you see this stuff happen with some of like the Ghost Hunters shows and yeah. stuff like Ghost Adventures and stuff like that when they use the channel box and things like that. Mm -hmm. If a entity, if a demon can manipulate frequencies and stuff to actually bring across a message on something that just goes through random frequencies, then you also think that it couldn't manipulate a computer or actually possess a digital body. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and it's about God's timing, God, God allowing, you know, there's says that there's certain uh, demonic beings or, or aimed, fallen angels that are chained in the abyss for their appointed time. And at some point they're going to be allowed to do certain things that we haven't seen. And, um, and I think that's what we're, uh, we're kind of being prepared for and people are anticipating now we kind of, 
you know, I've got several signs. I know the signs that kind of are all about this, that it doesn't, even if you're not Christian, you look, talk to all these other belief systems, they're all kind of saying the same thing. Hey, there, yeah. there's something in the air. There's a change that's coming. There's something that's going to happen big. What's it going to be? And people are guessing, you know, oh, it's going to be aliens. Oh, it's going to be the rapture. Oh, it's going to be World War Three. It's going to be this, that, and the other, you know. Um, you know, the 2012, I was, you know, back when 2012 was happening, there were so many people with so many different ideas. And, and it's just fascinating to see how these spirits just are able to get away with this time and time again, when we should so clearly recognize these lies and deceptions, because they don't really change. They're it just kind of like the lie never changes. The costume kind of does, but really it should be recognized. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, Anyone who has thoroughly studied the scriptures, Old and New Testament, especially end time prophecy, should be able to see all the chess pieces on the board being maneuvered into their final positions. I mean, yeah. you have countless people around the world trying to do away with cash. That's what part of this whole pandemic thing was about. Uh, mm -hmm. And moving to digital currency, that way you can be tracked, manipulated, and controlled. Uh, yeah. That's the reason why you're seeing this uh, push for vaccine passports and everything else, even though the airlines themselves, I was just informed today by someone whose son is training to be an airline pilot, they were told, everyone in his class was told that if they take the vaccine, that they will not be a pilot and will not be allowed to fly, yet you see all of these things on the other hand saying, well, if you're going to fly with us, you're going to have to show your vaccine passport. <laughs> you know, well, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like I said, you can see the right on the wall. You can see how they're, each of these things is slow preparation uh, for the very next thing. And the people that are making these things happen are the very people that don't believe any of these prophecies are true, which yeah. is just incredible. You know, it's like, there's no mark of the beast or one world system or anti, you know, it's like, you guys are literally in creating this exact same thing that you claim is never going to happen and that we're all crazy for believing in. It's like, okay, then quit doing all these things. Quit creating one world ideas and talking about, you know, getting world, rid of currencies and getting rid of governments and, and uh, boundaries. And I mean, it's just like, are you guys just blindly wanting to usher in the Antichrist? Because it sure seems that way uh, from the outside looking in. Well, and that's one of my biggest things. That is the reason why I've been so vocal here over the last few years uh, doing radio programs on other people's channels and networks and things like that, because uh, you don't have to have a background like mine to see the writing on the wall. You don't have to have a background like mine to see the political manipulations and how both sides are like a marionette flopping mm -hmm. around on strings of the ruler of the world. Yeah. Uh, regardless of who it is they claim to support or which party system they claim to support. Uh, yeah. Most people don't understand that in order for the new world order to rise, the old world order has to fall. And that means America has to be destroyed because we're the last bastion of freedom in the entire world. And you're watching that happen now. You watch mm -hmm. it happen during Trump's entire presidential reign, people being manipulated and pushed around like puppets. And it's going to be 10 times worse if Biden and Harris actually set in office because they're going to go full steam ahead at that point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was reading the other day that uh, Biden actually wants to put Andrew Cuomo from New York as lead attorney of the DOJ. And well, he just released something that's going through their uh, Congress right now in New York. Uh, and it's a 416. And basically it's saying that if the governor of New York, uh, for any reason, you know, of a communicable disease, if he declares a state of emergency, then he has the authority to get with law enforcement stuff and say, oh, if this person's sick, well, off to the quarantine center with you. This is a gulag type system. You watch this happen during the Bolshevik revolution in Russia, and you're watching a real time Bolshevik revolution happen here in America. People yeah, need to get yeah. in the history books and wake up and look at what's going on. Because if we don't stand now, there's not going to be anything left to stand for. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and we're seeing this from all these people from other countries that are coming in 
from like Venezuela and, uh, and people from Russia, people that grew up under communist dictatorships and socialist dictatorships saying, what are you people doing? We came to America, you know, my grandfather came to America who had to live through all this. And he told us his all, all his kids, you know, these stories about, you know, these dictators. And now you guys are wanting to do this to the greatest country on earth. Yeah. You know? And it, it's just disgusting because, uh, you know, we're, we've let these people be put in positions of power, you know, we're called the silent majority, right? Because we just kind of sit back and that's, that is, we as believers have fallen short, you know, um, you know, and there's that verse that talks about, you know, if, if we humble ourselves and come, come to God, he will, you know, uh, redeem us as a nation. And that's really what we need to do. We need to uh, repent as a nation that we've allowed things like, uh, this, you know, like abortion, you know, and, and the uh, murder of millions of babies, like the demasculinization and of mankind, like, you know, the breaking up of families and allowing people, you know, things like evolution to be taught in our schools, all these things, because we just sit back, we want to, you know, turn the other cheek, like you were saying yeah. earlier, nobody wants to stand up. And, uh, you know, there's an old saying when uh, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing and that's what we've seen well exactly i mean it's one of those things what well, all boils down to the great commandments that christ gave you know you love god with all your mind heart body and soul right and then you love your neighbors you love yourself and all of the laws and the prophets hang on these two things well for me to love my neighbor as I love myself, I love myself enough that I'm not going to let the jackboot of tyranny break my neck and stomp down on me. So mm -hmm. I have to love my neighbor that much as well, which means yeah. I should be talking to my neighbors and saying, hey, this stuff's going on and we need to take a stand against it or bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And I think, you know, uh, one of the biggest problems has happened as, you know, people talk about overpopulation it's not as much overpopulation that's our problem the pro problem is conglomeration you know, when people conglomerate in these big cities they 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 don't talk to their neighbors they're you know they don't associate to people on the way that that people do in small town of america and that's kind of and then they look toward government to solve problems and yeah. we've seen what happens when the government steps in and tries to solve problems we see the one common denominator between every city in America that has gone, you know, gone uh, to the dumps basically, and been taken over by, by, you know, home, the homeless and the, the, uh, the hateful and these, these, uh, you know, people that are anti-American and, and socialist people, and they're just letting them take over. And then the one common denominator is they're all ran by these socialist liberal uh, people, you know, like the, the state I'm in. I'm in far eastern Oregon, like on the, right on the Idaho border. I'm more associated to the Idaho side. I'm only about an hour from Boise. So everyone where I live is very conservative. And we're almost embarrassed to say we're even in Oregon because nobody in this part of Oregon... <laughs> Nobody in this part of Oregon believes in what's happening and everything up in Portland and all the crazy part of Oregon. So it's, it's just incredible and, and insane. That's right. Unfortunately, I'm stuck in a Democrat run city in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, the armpit of Tennessee. So I get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Uh, it's very hard being a conservative in this area, or if you even want to call me that, I guess technically I'd be a libertarian uh, or mm. a constitutionalist rather would probably be a better definition. But sure. uh, it's hard to rally the people to actually stand, even in just a basic protest against the type of draconian measures and stuff that you're seeing uh, in a city that's been brainwashed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, you've heard of the Hegelian dialectic, you know, they, that's what they're trying oh, to create, create the problem, yeah, problem, reaction, solution, order out of chaos. So exactly what we're kind of seeing is they want to create the problem. They want to create these divisiveness. They want black against white. They want the straights against gays. They want, you know, blue versus red. They want all this division that's happening, Republican against Democrat, you know, just the two parties, you know, so we can have the, just this team mentality. 
And that's kind of the problem is people have this team mentality. Which team are you on? Oh, you're like Trump, then I hate you. Oh, you like, you know, yeah. this, that, or the other, I hate you. You're Gabe and you're the enemy. You know, all these kinds of things <clears throat> which uh, play a role in dividing us to the point where we probably have a lot more in common than, than we would, would think to it with a lot of people out there as far as not wanting to lose America. <clears throat> There's just very few, very, very few amount of people that are the crazed socialist uh, people that get all of this airtime and get all of these views because they're so loud. They're just, they're the squeaky wheel. Yeah. And so they get this, this, uh, this airtime. Well, and that's, you know, one of the strategies of the enemy, you know, make people resort to tribalism, uh, yeah. black versus white, versus Latino, oh, you're racist if you support such and such. Uh, Democrat, Republican, it's all about division and control. It's all about working people like puppets. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the most furiating fur conversations I have with people is trying to get them to understand uh, psychological operations and how it works between the media and stuff like that. Uh, heaven forbid if I bring up Operation Mockingbird or something along those lines because people will be like the cia doesn't do stuff like that i mean like, you have no idea what the cia does do you <laughs> yeah 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 i mean it's where there's there's a will there's a way and they've tried so many things and <clears throat> so many things that none of us will ever know about but uh yeah you can't put anything past the government when you give them power and uh it's interesting times, you know, I, I think in, in, in these times, I think people, it is easy to get scared, but I think as believers, we do need to keep our heads held high yeah. and actually be, uh, actually be counted as worthy. The fact that we're chosen to be almost like the remnant to be uh, living and, and seeing these things unfold, especially if you lived during the time, like kind of our, our, uh, uh, in our uh, group of like, 30s to 50 years old, you've kind of seen uh, these things unfold from the non-internet times or the non-controlling of, of uh, uh, technology to where it's completely taken over the kids of today. And the younger generation of today is just kind of like controlled by technology and you're seeing yeah. these things and you're thinking, what's going to be in another 30 years? And it's moving exponentially. It's growing at a point where now technology is creating technology. It's not at the same uh, level of control that we've had in the past. It's at an hour rate that it's jumping, you know, where there, you know, we used to come out with phones every like five or six years. Now they come out with a phone every, you know, two every year, two new versions of it or whatever. It's just, it, you can't keep up with this type of growth and not have it uh, fall apart at some point. Well, exactly. I mean, and I get asked all the time, Jason, what, what happened to our youth and stuff like that? Well, it, it's twofold. One, uh, you let them do nothing but sit on computer and cell phones and video games all the time. And two, you uh, let them be taught by a public education system that pushes communism and socialism on a regular basis while at the same time discriminating and uh, even you know, to the point of expelling and, you know, suspending students for even talking about Christ and everything else. So, you know, what did you expect? People don't understand that in order to program an individual, you don't have to do to them what was done to me. Uh, these video games and media do the vast majority of that. And then when you couple the programming they go through on that and the traumatization from the games and movies and things, and you add bad education on top of it and a steady source of propaganda you have programmable minions yeah yep exactly and that that's in you know and then they become the perpetrators of the same lie that they were taught so yeah. like you said yeah programmable minions that are then you know out there preaching the same things and then they're even more rabid about it because they want to be better than the previous age you know I want to be better. We got to rise. We got to somehow fix this. We got to come together and be the, the generation that does figure it out, you know? And it's like, man, this is, this, this is the humanistic, the idea that mankind can somehow come together and figure these things out 
and you know it, it goes back to the same lie in the garden you the spirit you shall, you shall be as gods it goes to the tower of babel ascending into the heavens to be like gods and it goes to the quantum computers and hive mind and antichrist delusion that will come here shortly that uh and it's all connected to the same lie well and i hope that those that are watching this program and stuff will understand that uh real christians saints that believe and love christ we are the antithesis to what the enemy is doing you know because we know christ we know the truth that's the reason why the church can't sit on the pews every Sunday and Wednesday anymore. You can't just be lazy and lackadaisical. You have to truly live for Christ and understand what we were talking about. You know, I mean, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love them, you want them to know the truth. And yeah. once you have spoken with them and created that spark you know, even if they don't get saved after you talk to them, if you just planted that seed and created that spark, that desire to know truth, anytime you seek truth, it's going to lead you to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's just That's right. the end all be all of it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, if you can just be, like I said, plant that seed, be a link in the chain, you know, that's sometimes what it's all about. And sometimes you're the one that's going to push that person over the edge. And sometimes people that seem the most angry, the most atheist, the most, uh, you know, resistant to the gospel message are the ones most wanting it because they're, they're asking all these questions. They're, they're putting up all these, you know, demands of, you know, what they think should happen because they're mad they're angry or they're hurt, you know, and they're wanting some sort of answer, but they haven't heard it explained in the right way. And here's your opportunity to possibly change a misconception to possibly uh, reinterpret something that was misunderstood to them about what they thought the gospel meant. And it may just, all, and, and that'll just trigger in their mind, like, oh my gosh, I was wrong. That's what it means. And they can instantly accept the gospel message because they know it's true. I mean, when you're it's presented in the right way and it makes sense, all of us have this inherently or knowledge within us. And when people hear it, they will respond. And it's, it's like the way of the master, you know, he's, he's got some incredible video. There's all kinds of great videos online where they just simply present the simple gospel message and, and, and the fact that you are a sinner. That's the biggest thing that people don't understand. What is sin? Who am I sinning against? But once you recognize that each of us is a sinner, that all of us has fallen short, there's nothing we can do to earn our way to salvation or, you know, uh, become, you know, a God-like being enough to, uh, uh, you know, pay for our own sins, you know, all these different things. But there was one that was. There is one that came that did have the ability to do that because he was born without sin. Unlike us, he was born without sin and yet paid the penalty. He's the one that came and, and paid our fine so that we could be saved. And, uh, and it's just an incredible, perfect story. And I think if people could hear it explained in the right way, people would just be, you know, jumping for joy to finally find, wow, this is what I've always been looking for, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's one of those things, I mean, my personal testimony, the stuff that I did or was forced to do, you know, things of that nature. Uh, just when I think about God's mercy and the fact that he could have left me in hell when I died mm -hmm. uh, and he would have been totally justified to do so, but he chose to bring me back and, you know, told me he had a purpose, you know, if he is willing to save someone like me, then there doesn't exist a person that's not redeemable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, somebody who's, who's like you said, has a satanic background like yourself or brought up in, in that type of a family, you know, you may feel like, oh, there's no hope for me, you know, that of all people, I could not be chosen for the sins of my family or my whatever, you know, but look in the Bible who God uses over and over again. Not only can you be saved, you can be one of the heroes. You can yep. be one, one of the ones who God loves to reach down and pick up and say that the people you'd least expect, because those are all the people you see in the Bible being used. The Davids, the Moses, the 
the, uh, the Noahs and all their, all of these people had all kinds of faults. They were huge sinners. Yeah. And, um, and that's a testimony for all of us to realize that we're all the prodigal son. We've all fallen away and, uh, and that God is waiting for us with his arms outstretched with no judgment when we accept him, uh, and Christ and, and, uh, he's not going to, uh, he's going to be waiting with open arms. And so, uh, exactly. He always bad. picks up the underdogs. Yeah, That's one of the exactly. things that I, that I love about it, man. If you ever want to book, want to read something where, you know, the underdog is proven and showed to be a champion through the Lord, man, read your Bible. Yep. You don't, you don't need false, you know, fiction stories and stuff like that. Just read the Bible. It's got everything in there you could want. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Praise God. Well, man, uh, going to close this one out. Uh, got one last question for you for the night before we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to give any advice to Christians right now, living in the times that we're in, especially in America and the world over with the ugly head of tyranny rearing its head and things like that, if you're going to give them advice, uh, what would it be? Hmm. Well, definitely, you know, I think there's a lot of people that like to straddle the fence, you know, that try to remain on both sides of, of the world. And, but in the back of their mind, oh, I went, to, I went to Sunday school as a kid. I believe in God, you know, but they're not truly walking the walk. And I would, I would just implore people, don't straddle the fence. Choose who you're going to serve because the Bible tells clearly, if you're not with Christ, you're against him. You know, it's not just about believing in God. Satan believes in God, you know. It's about walking the walk. It's about turning from your sins and and turning down the path of what God you know made you to be, and 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 wanting to do His will, being a servant toward not only to God but to others. When we serve others, we serve God, and that's who we're called to be. You know, oftentimes people say you know, there's a lot of depression that people go through. I always tell people, man, the cure for depression starts. Take your focus on someone else. Serve someone in an even worse spot than you, you know, because there's always someone out there who's even in a worse spot than you. And we're called to, to help our other fellow man out. And when we do that, we, uh, you know, that, that cures your depression. That's what we're meant to do. So I would just call people to, you know, choose this day to serve God. Ch choose this day to accept, to ask Christ in your heart and uh, stop straddling the fence because none of us know the time or the hour. And uh, God, just even at this point, has been gracious to let it go on for as long as he has. So I just count every day as grace that he is waking more people up, allowing more people the chance to, uh, to come home to the truth. Um, so I just implore people, don't believe us. Investigate these things for yourself. Investigate the word of God for yourself. Ask Christ to reveal himself in a way that makes sense to you and he will do so every time man uh all right where can people find your music uh how can they you know check out what you're about websites facebook all that good stuff man i want people to be able yeah. to reach out and listen to your music and hopefully it'll bless them the way it's blessed me awesome appreciate it yeah that's all we've always wanted to do with the music like i said i never said i had to to be a musician to make money this is about I was, this was, I was convicted to do this and uh, through my own testimony, through my own journey, I was convicted to present this message in this way because there's a lot of people, you try to explain these things, sit down and explain all these connections, all these pieces of the puzzle. It's so hard to get someone to listen and, and, and take it all in. But sometimes someone will listen to a song, you know, a three minute song and it'll be just a, a little inspiration. Oh, what are they talking about? Let me take that and research what what's the nephilim you know what's the uh what does it mean to be saved truly you know if jesus was real you know all these things that's the questions that's what i want to do is with my music is be a link in the chain i'm not going to be the one to save anybody but god may be seeking you out to uh plant that seed or my music to be part of that link in the chain that leads someone eventually toward uh knowing god as a personal savior jesus as a personal savior so um yeah, if you go to destinylab.com, you can check out all our music. We just came out with our fourth album called Shift Your Paradigm. 
And right now, if you order all four of our albums, we throw in a fifth additional download which is concocted collabos, which is 30 additional songs of collaborations I've done with other artists over the years and some remixes that we've done of, of some of our songs. So in all, it's like a hundred songs for $40 uh, and you get 15% off that right now uh, at Destiny Lab if you use the uh, code SHIFT15. And that's all on it. When you go to destinylab.com, that'll all pop up and tell you all these things. You get a free sticker and that free download if you order right now. And we also have our YouTube channel, which is, is one of the best ways we use to uh, witness to people is youtube.com forward slash Destiny Lab. We have dozens of really good uh, music videos. A lot of them made by some amazing animators and different artists that have put them together for us. So we're just really blessed that God has put these people on our path that have, have used their artistic talents to uh, to help us bring our ministry to the next level and people like yourself that reach out for interviews. It's just, you know, it's a real blessing. And we just praise God every day that God has uh, used our music to witness to people. And, uh, and we just praise him that he's using it more and more each day. So thank you so much. Oh man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for spending time with us. It's been a real blessing. Really enjoyed the conversation. I think my people Absolutely. who watch this channel are going to really enjoy it too. And, uh, and talking about them collaborations, I'm going to have to listen to that stuff. It might make me dust off my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> well, Sweet. All right, guys, this is Jason with Archangel. We're going to get out of here for the night. I hope you guys enjoyed the program. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.